Hey, folks, welcome back to the Living in the Virtue of Your Strengths podcast. My name is Matt Engel. I am a certified Catholic mindset coach at Metanoia Catholic. And also, I'm a certified Clifton Strengths Finder coach from Gallup. And on this podcast, we explore not only the signature themes and how to name them and claim them and aim them, but also how to tame them. We want to have a conversation how to live these strengths, these talents virtuously. Because when we live them virtuously, that's where they are in their greatest contribution. We're not in overuse. We're not in any sort of vicious patterns here. Uh, we want to identify where they show up virtuously, but we also want to kind of gain a little insight of where they show up viciously and, and explore also those mindsets that are behind those things at Metanoia Catholic, which is who's sponsoring this podcast. I am an owner of Metanoia Catholic. At Metanoia Catholic, catholiccoaching.com, we look at mindset, right? What we're thinking as the foundation to our behaviors and to our emotional life. All right. So how we show up virtuously or viciously in these beautiful talent themes, which are a gift, is often by the very mindsets that we hold. So today we are going to be exploring, drum roll please, the talent theme of positivity. Okay, here we are. And so we're going to be looking at uh, the uh, what drives the person that is high in positivity. We did our straw poll at the beginning of the podcast here. And we got some number fours. We have a number one. Uh, those people in the top 10, be pre prepared to deliver a little bit on your positive of your positivity to this podcast. Number 21 for me. So yeah, it's supporting themes, right? Uh, and then we want to see where it shows up virtuously, viciously, and what are those mindsets behind it, okay? So that we can choose those mindsets that incline us to show up more virtuously in these strengths. When we're showing up virtuously in these strengths, we are building the kingdom of God, right? And becoming saints in the process and helping others to become saints in the process. So what does Gallup have to say about positivity? So we always like to start with a high-level overview. We pull our uh, the the baseball card, I call it, uh, of the, the strengths profile that I got at my certification. So uh, let's run through this, okay? So the person's high positivity, I am, what's their being statement? I am optimistic, hopeful, and fun-loving. I will, what are they doing? I will lift enlightened emotional environments. I bring, what's that contribution? I bring contagious energy and enthusiasm. I need, what's that requirement to be able to show up effortlessly in that place of contribution? I need freedom to experience the joy and drama of life. I love, what are those things they value? I love living life to its fullest. I hate, again, revealing what they value, negative people who drain the life out of others, specifically those who drain the life out of me, right? The positive person might say. Metaphor image, the glass is half full, not half empty. And that barrier label, you're just naive. Okay, so that's a high level overview. Let's jump over to the word picture that I've got. So it's kind of fun. If you're watching on YouTube, you can follow along with this. But if you're just listening in, here's what I got. And then I want to invite other people that are listening to the podcast live to be able to contribute what they think could be added to this word picture. Okay, so the first thing I have here is the very, you know, textbook definition of positivity, raising the emotional temperature of the room. You got a thermostat with a little thermometer, a little heart at the bottom and a big heart at the top. Okay. Because th that's what positivity does. And it's interesting here as, as I'm looking at this and here it is, positivity is a relationship theme, right? But I wonder if Gallup had a tough time keeping this out of the influencing themes because so much of our discussion on positivity or even with my research on positivity there's this like, there seems to be a desire to see somebody else's emotions changed by the work. So I'd love to hear those people that are high in positivity, how that lands, okay? Um, or if it's something where it's just like, those relationship themes are often a one-to-one -one relationship versus a one-to-many in the influencers. Uh, but I'm curious what how we might, uh, how, that, how that shows up for y'all. I've got that image of the glass that's half full, right? That perspective. So it's got a glass of water that's literally there's halfway filled or halfway empty, however you want to put it at, but it's pointing to that full part of it. I've got an image of a cell phone charger because when somebody positive shows up, I think of Megan Mohan on our team, right? Megan Mohan, Mastriani, some of you guys might know her. She's one of our coaches, but like when you meet Megan, when you're around Megan, it's just like, 
can we just sit here? Cause I just feel good when you're around. She's just so high positivity and just like, it just overflows. She's so encouraging overflows. Tilia, you're like that too. Uh, so they just raise the emotional temperature of the temperature of the room. I've got two movie images here. I've got little Russell from the movie up. It's that little boy scout that is always hanging out with a curmudgeon. I don't know his name. I've seen this movie once because I was so sad in the first five minutes of it. Anybody had seen this movie is like, oh my gosh, why would I watch this movie? It's so sad. But at the same time, it's a beautiful movie, right? But there's this little boy who's just so positive, right? And then there's uh, the, the other character I have is classic Pollyanna. All right, so Pollyanna, Haley Mills, uh, I think came out in the 60s, right around Parent Trap that time. And uh, even we get this expression, ah, you're just such a Pollyanna. A Pollyanna is somebody that's always looking at the silver lining, glass, glass half full, positive perspective. Uh, but it's often thrown out there as kind of like a negative thing, playing more towards that barrier label that positivity can have of just being naive. Okay. So, yeah. And that naivety, naivete, right? And that being naive may be something that shows up more on a vicious pattern. We'll get into that. But folks, what else can we add here to this image? Or how is this image, this word picture that we put out here, those people that are high positivity, Teresa, Marty, John, Talia, anybody else here that's high positivity? Like, how is this landing for you? All right. What can we add? How's it landing? Marty, what do we got? Absolutely. So, I mean, just more figures would be Tigger, right? Everybody's familiar with Winnie the Pooh, and Tigger's always the happy the, the happy guy that wants to have fun, right? There's joy from, uh, you guys talk about this film a lot because, you know, of the emotional process. Uh, I forget the name of the movie, but it's got joy, anger, and, um, you know, Inside Out. Guys, joy, Inside Out, right? You know, Inside Out, yeah. Positive, right? That's her, uh -huh. that's her mission, right? To keep the joy and then... Uh, uh, I like to, even Captain America. I'm a big Marvels fan, right? And like, boy, I tell you what, you, you know, as the movies progress, it gets harder and harder. And he always has those motivational speeches, and he has hope. And 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 so I, I like the, uh, the 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 idea of the silver lining too, right? I, I don't know, you know, what you would use for an image of that, but you know, when things are hard, when there's suffering, when there's evil. Uh, you know, to to be able to see the good, even in the evil and the suffering, right? You know, and and you know, to equate good with God, right? God is goodness. To to be able to see God in everything, including evil and suffering, right? That He allows it because He can, you know, use it to turn into something good. And uh, uh, you know, and and so yeah, just just man, I got a whole lot more, but just those I I think are good images. Right. For me, an examples of, uh, you know, positive positivity, you know, people love are hopeful, it. Fun. Yeah. Love it, Marty. Yeah. I, I love that, that, that witness to hope, that image of hope and being able to see the good amidst the evil. I think of another Marvel character, Professor X that sees that good. He can, he can literally see into the mind with his gift to the minds of everybody of all of humanity and he could emerge from that very bitter. And there's times in the, where you see he is struggling with that bitterness, but ultimately he sees the good and he always wants to be calling forth the good, inviting somebody to see the good. I see in the relationship that he has with Magneto, right? Who's like the villain, but he's, he's got that hard pass similar to the way that, that, uh, that um, uh, Professor X has that rough past, right? And, and he's always trying to invite Magneto to kind of come and see the good and have that hopeful perspective. We can certainly see raising hope uh, as being something that uh, positivity does well. Uh, Talia, and then, and then, um, uh, and then we're going to have Jane. Talia, go ahead. Yeah. I don't know if I have anything to add to it. I think you did a good job explaining it and then Marty adding those things. So um, encouraging. Thank you for being so positive. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I think uh, what you said about like, I don't say this to people about myself, but like, oh, I just want to be around them a lot. I feel so good when I'm around you. I feel really calm. Like I I feel like I've gotten that a lot said about me or to me. So when you said that, I'm like, I have heard that a lot. Or people tell me that a lot. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that because it's just happening, but people say that. So when you said that, I was like, oh, I hear that a lot. And then 
I really like the um, the Russell character from Up because <laughs> if you've watched it, he really is just like, let's go. And like anything bad that happens, he's like, it's okay, let's figure it out. Um, so I can just relate to that too, which is really good. But also sometimes people don't want it. Like in the movie, the old man doesn't necessarily want it. Um, but yeah, I, I really agree with all of these things. I think though with like, if you've seen up with Russell, it's not like he never isn't positive because towards the end of the movie, I think it starts to wear and tear when other people don't receive that positivity. You can see that he gets sad and kind of mm. discouraged. So it's not like you're always there 100% of the time. It's just like, that's your inclination. That's your go-to, but you still can be negative. So I just wanted to add that, but it is the inclination. It's always on the mind of like, wait, what? Yeah, there is there is an aversion to that negativity, especially it can it can wear on you. And so we talk a lot about ideal conditions, especially in terms of your temperament, in terms of your strengths. Ideal conditions, I would argue, for the positive person is being around positive people, right? Or people that at least will respond to the positivity. But I'm I'm curious when you're around the Eeyore characters or the people that refuse to see the silver lining, what does that do to you, Talia? Yeah. <laughs> I want to run away. I want to, I, I want, well, first I don't want to run, run away. First I'm like, I want to like, be like, no, like this is positive X, Y, and Z. Like, don't you know, like the possibility of this, like, aren't you seeing this? So first I want to keep doing that, but if it keeps coming back negative, then I kind of just want to run away and be like, I can't be around this anymore. Like you're draining me. Like I, this isn't good for me to even think this way. Like, why would you do that? Those are like some thoughts that come up in my inclinations. So I think you're that's draining me. Yes. You're draining me. And like, and, and sometimes people at that lower energy level, it's something that they feel fueled by that, right? There's just a comfort in being that melancholic state, right? And so it's like, they can be there and it's not necessarily like a negative. There's almost a comfort that's being there where the person that's high positivity may feel, feel an inclination to to get away or like they, they need to retreat. And this is, I think this is important. And we can look at this negatively as like, oh, they just run away from anything that's negative or they perceive to be negative, but we can hold space for this as perhaps an ideal condition. So maybe you know that you're going into something that's going to be a challenging conversation or a challenging relationship and just know that you might need a little bit more self-care afterwards and have a little bit of space for that. Jane, I see you. Come on in. Good morning. Um, a couple of things. One of the things I wanted to follow up on that question about positivity and um, <clears throat> when we're around negativity, for many, many, many years, um, I had um, fought depression. And it was one of my wonder questions when I would be really, really like in a, like literally drowning. That's how uh, the, the the image that I would have is like, I was just going down to the deepest part of the pool. I'd always ask, you know, who's, who, who encourages the encourager? And, um, and so that's kind of a challenge for a positivity person. Like if you are around a melancholic so much, and then, um, and thanks to the temperament uh, assessment that you guys do, one of the, the realizations that I had was I actually have 33% melancholic. I'm like, oh, well, that makes sense. You know, I do have that tendency towards negativity or, you know, depression or or whatever, you know. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to talk about that of like, yeah, positivity people, sometimes we just need to, you know, be around other positive people. Um, and I know for my own self, one of the things I've realized, especially with, you know, with the pandemic and with working online, I literally sometimes need to like, I just need to go find a human being to talk to and to hug because as much as I've been giving or receiving online, I'm not, um, it's not that battery. It's not a true filling up my battery. Does that make Interesting. sense? Interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's I that, think that connection that's still desired. Yeah, yeah, and it goes, contact. one more thing goes back to you had an original question about the difference between positivity being a relationship builder theme. And one of the questions that 
Gallup always talks about is like positivity versus woo. Woo's the influencer, positivity is that relationship builder. And for me, when I realized that, that like I need a human being to hug, like I need somebody to specifically talk to and laugh with or whatever, or go for a walk. That's the relationship building part. My number four is woo. And so I do get excited for me. What feeds my positivity is when I hear others respond to my positivity and then they share with me, oh, you know what, you know, you mentioned blah, blah, blah. Like for instance, I I was talking to a dear friend of mine. She's going through a very difficult situation uh, in in her, her, her marriage situation. She called me, she was very upset. And I kind of, again, that redemptive, right? And I kind of turned the turned the, the the Rubik's cube to a different color. And she was just like, oh, thank you. That's what I needed to hear. Yes, that's, and so that was that influencer, mm-hmm. right? Like, oh, okay, my positivity, we don't want to just be positive just to be positive. We do want to build the kingdom, like you said, and we want to move people. Um, but then that's always that charge of like, well, where do I get the, where do I get charged? So, you know, of course it's Christ. And then the final thing I want to share or other positive people. Yes. Or other positive people. Exactly. Yes, exactly. So I know my go-to people, um, an interesting movie that is probably not very well seen, but I highly recommend it is called, uh, Life is beautiful. It's actually an Italian movie with um with with subtitles, but the context is this Jewish uh, man. It's in Germany. He marries a Christian. He gets caught, you know he he gets arrested, and his son goes with him, unbeknownst to him, and his wife like, no, I'm getting on that train too. And they're like, well, you don't have to. No, 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 I'm getting on your that train. But so his son is with him in this concentration camp and he's trying to protect his son and the antics and he turns it into a game. Mm -hmm. He's telling them. And it's, I mean, if you've ever seen it, it really is a beautiful, a beautiful way of positivity, like in the midst of this horror of Mm -hmm. this concentration camp. And I mean, not to give the whole story, but even oh, it's the- heart wrenching and beautiful, it's, and it's, yeah. it's incredible. That's You've we'll leave it. it at that. Yeah. So anyway, that, so, yeah, that's that's something I would add. But awesome. um, yeah, I would say maybe um, having another picture of like two people talking and the the energy flowing or something like that. Got it. Awesome, Jane. Thanks so much. Yeah, that positivity. Woo. I don't know if it's. I know it's a common pairing that Gallup talks about. So somebody's high and the positivity, often high and woo. It might be the most common pairing that's out there. Um, I don't know that for sure, but I uh, I know it's high up there. Teresa, we'll listen to you, and then we will uh, jump into our next slide. Teresa. Thank you. Um, yeah, what Talia was talking about being around, you know, people who aren't like really positive and all that, and it can be draining. What I found is it's kind of a challenge for me. Mm. When I worked in the nursing home, I loved going after, I mean, I targeted the grumpy little old men and I, I just loved it. I would spend time with them and, and finally, like, you know, starting to see the crack of a smile and eventually getting where they were looking forward to you coming and actually getting some of them to come to activities. (laughs) And it was just like, wow. I mean, that's a God-given gift. That's not me. You know, that's the Holy Spirit working through me. And then Jane, when you were saying about you know, the whole thing with really connecting with people, not just the Zoom stuff. I was, I've just been going through some depression myself and trying to find a therapist through the pandemic who would see you face to face. Oh my gosh, it was almost impossible. And I was just not willing to settle. I finally did find somebody, but it took me months and months and months. And what a difference when you can be you know, with somebody. And I, 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 I'm retired now. I I haven't worked for, you know, just over a year and I really was unknowingly isolating myself mm. and then realized, okay, I, I've got to make a change. I've started volunteering. I'm for, you know, pushing myself to do things and it makes a big difference for somebody, you know, who's high in positivity. 
That's that's huge. And and, and just the lesson that you learned there, Teresa, in, in terms of like your ideal conditions. Again, when we show up in our when we are able to create ideal conditions, it makes it easier to show up in our area of giftedness, right? In our area of contribution. Positivity needs to be around other people in order for it to show up. It's not something that's just self-indulgent, but it desires to make an impact on the people that are around it. Um, and I love all the positive people on this call because every time they say something, you say something or somebody else says something that lands, their heads are nodding and there's all this great positive feedback that's happening. <laughs> and they're using the emojis like we're blowing up with emojis right now. All right. So as we as we take this conversation into what what is that primary motivation that's driving the person with this talent theme of positivity? Here's my stab. Have a positive emotional impact on another. All right. So you want to have a positive emotional impact on another person. Now, like raising, and this is where, like, as I looked at this and I was like, man, that sounds like an influencer talent, right? Influencer talents want to like see, they want to see the feedback of, of something, you know, that whatever they're doing is impacting somebody in the way that they think, feel, and act, right? Here, it's like helping somebody to move to a positive place or a positive perspective. Um, but how does this land for people that are high positivity? I see kind of like some nods and some heads cocked to the side and being like, is there more? Is there more than meets the eye? John, what do you got? Yeah, um, I would say, yes, definitely. At first, it's about the, the people but it also can be about a project. So I, I'm a software developer and software is difficult. And um, I'm working on a project where we test that each and every day. So I'm the testing side of it, not the building itself, not the developer itself. Um, but when it's not working and everyone else is going negative and a negative spin cycle in the room, I'm the one that goes, it's gonna be okay. We're gonna get there. We're eventually gonna get there. So the positivity comes out saying, hey, it's all right. We're gonna we're going to get the software up and running. We'll just record the bug. We do that. We make the steps. You make a positive impact by slowly getting the software where it needs to go. Um, same goes for the people. So yes, you're trying to encourage the others not to go in the negative spend cycle. Um, but you, under, but I also understand it. It's not great to have bugs. So you, it's, a, it's an awareness really. So I would say it can be both trying to motivate everybody else around you to be positive with what we're working on, but also just looking at the software and not being beaten down when you're getting too many bugs in the software itself. Okay. So, so when you, I'm curious, John, as, as you know, you're in these situations where you, you're testing the software, you hit a bug, people are starting to do the negative spin cycle. Uh, you show up, you kind of give the bright side. What are you hoping you're like, what are you hoping to accomplish? What would what, like a perfect impact look like for you? Everyone finds acceptance that we're going to get the, the product working the way it needs to be. And the, that we still have an end goal, which is to have working software that works for all of the team mm. members and everybody in the department. So I'm always looking at the end goal and I have that end goal in mind. I know what's going to take steps to get there and we're going to go up the mountain and down the mountain, but eventually we're going to get to heaven. It, it, it goes into my Christian, my Catholic perspective as well. So I might be on my highest of highs some days and I might trip and stumble and sin but there's always confession and there's always the end goal is heaven. So that redemptive stuff, you've nailed it with redemption. So we're, we're, we're driving towards God and God is love. And if we're going to do that, we need to have bring God, show God's love to others through our positive impact in others' lives. Oh man, I'm oh. feeling inspired by your words here, John. And what I'm hearing also is like this, this hope, right? And so maybe there's something in the motivation here that has to do with not just like having a positive emotional impact, but more specifically, it's that emotion of hope. Right yes. in the midst of in, in the midst of challenge. Okay, yes, here, awesome, awesome. Um, and one of the things you referenced there, John, and, and we we spoke about this as a group beforehand. Like there seems to be a unique ability for the person high positivity when you're surrounded by the evidence of the fall. Okay, the fall of mankind. When you're surrounded by all the sin, they have the ability to 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 have that eternal perspective and look at it in the context. Of redemption, right? And there's something that's like, yeah, it's terrible. And Christ died on the cross and he rose from the grave. Okay. So like there's this, there's this hope. There's there's a hope that's there. And I think that I think the person who's strong in positivity is the one that has grounded their reason for hope in something that is 
truly can bear the weight of their hope, right? This is where I think our Christian religion, Jesus Christ, is, is the only one that is a real reason to hope. Talia, what do you got? Yes, I was thinking about the difference between woo and positivity with the motivation, where like woo is to like the, the motivation, the goal is to actually win people over. Like that's the aim, I think, with woo, where like positivity, that's not the thing in my mind. It's like, it's what the motivation is like, wait, I have to tell you the good in this. So it's like, it's not, it's just like, wait, it's just, I want to tell you this. I have to tell you the good in I this. I have to tell you the good news. I have to or I'll explode. share share the positive in it, like the hope in this situation. Not because I'm trying to win you over, just because like in my mind, that thought is true. And so it's like, I have to speak truth of like, there's hope and good in this situation. It's not necessarily to win them over where like woo might be, but the positivity is like, I need to tell you the fact here of like that something good can happen or is happening. So is it like, um, and you can do with it what you want, but I'm going to share this. Is that yeah, how it is? Yeah, I think it's like, I have to share this. And then obviously if it does have that, if the goal, like it's cool if it has the effect of it. And that means a lot, but I was just really trying to distinguish the woo and the positivity. So that's what I was thinking. It's like, I have to share this with you. Awesome. Okay. Finding the true, the good, and the beautiful in all things. Uh, John's in agreement with you here, Talia. Um, Teresa, what do you got? Thanks, Talia. You know, I was thinking that um, in having a positive emotional impact on others, um, sometimes for me, it's almost a motivation to break the ice. You know, if I'm with a lot of, let's just say melancholics, and, and I found that if I can, you know, break the ice, it kind of opens things up for other people where then they're more likely to share and Maybe they were thinking things that they were weren't sure would be accepted in the group. And, and then it's just definitely a positive impact on them. Mm, I hear you just but like I creating my, a space. My, being a, my sanguine has an awful lot to do with it too. Just yep. the fact that I used to tell my residents at the nursing home that my middle name was fun. I just like to, I can find fun in just about anything. Sometimes to the point that people look at me like, what is wrong with you? And I, you know, I'm so, okay, it's me. I well, it's amazing. What's amazing here, Teresa, is, 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 uh, is you say, I can fun and find fun in just about anything. Yet you shared that you struggle, you were struggling about a year ago with depression mm -hmm. and, and it's, and what were the, what were the shifts there? And I think this is something that's important for people to understand about again ideal conditions for these talents to show up and be, be their best. And this how these talents are 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 a facet of our unique design, right? Um, Teresa, it, it seems like you're a person that needs to be around other people. Oh, definitely. Just, yeah. So, like, you know what? what but you know, what, how can we create I've, that? Something else I've realized is. There's a very fine line between somebody who maybe has a really good sense of humor and then can go over into that depression, whatever they say that about a lot of comedians and stuff. And I'm my um, my melancholic, I think is like 68 and my phlegmatic and my sanguine. I'm like in the high 80s. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm learning through metanoia that, wow, I'm dealing with a lot. <laughs> You know? Well, yeah, it can see, it can seem almost bipolar, you know, in, yeah. the, in the swings, you know, and yeah. that's even there's a, there's even uh, a friend of mine was telling me that people that are high, uh, you know, high sanguine with the secondary melancholic are often he he has a bit of a speculation that there might be some association between that and the commonality and bipolar. Not to put any sort of diagnosis on you, but that's just somebody looking at the mm -hmm. the swings between those two temperaments, and they can be a little bit more pronounced than they are with like a melancholic secondary with phlegmatic, right? Mm -hmm. Cause it's, they're just almost at extreme ends of it. Yeah, Teresa, well, thank you. That. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Jane, what do you got? Um, I was thinking again, of going back to that woo and uh, versus positivity. And I, I think for the motivation for positivity is the, not just the impact on another, but more, the positive emotional experience 
Um, because again, it's that relationship builder theme, right? Like mm -hmm. we want the experience. <clears throat> We're not so, con at least for me, I'm, I'm not con so concerned with the impact that I'm having on the other is that it is the experience with the other, a positive emotional and what they do with that later, you know, and of course, like you said, positive and, and woo, I mean, my woo is number four. So it kind of, it's like this murky, which comes first, the chicken or the egg. Um, and then the other thought I wanted to share was I had a conversation like literally <clears throat> almost more than a year ago about sanguine and melancholic. Her husband was fighting depression and they actually had to move from Northern United, you know, Northern United States winter down to Southwest. And her observation was, cause she's positive sanguine. Her observation was the problem with the sanguine when they drop down to that depression, it's, it's like almost a high dive. Like it's such a big, huge gap that it is so drastic. Whereas a melancholic, it's, you know, they, like you said, they kind of like to sit in that, you know, it's a little more little moderated. Of, it's a extreme. moderate, it's a, yep. like a low dive or even just yep. from the edge. <clears throat> and that's probably the biggest challenge with a, with a sanguine or, a, or a positive person is that um, the flow is such high. And so when we go down, it's a, you know, it's going from, you know, instead of my, zero to Mach 100. It's like from Mach 100 down to zero. Okay. Whereas, so there could be some significant swings that we've got yeah. here. So awesome. it does seem, and I had my, my older kids have said to me, mom, I think you were bipolar when you were, you know, when we were raised. And I was like, dudes, my hormones were so out of whack, <laughs> of course. But also, you know, I didn't have the mindset. I didn't have this training of how to capture my thoughts, capture my feelings, all of that mm -hmm. stuff. Um, and I, I've also recognized that I have a house full of melancholics. So, so it's very difficult for me to like, like I said, that was my mantra. Like who encourages the encourager? Like I need to find a positive person because all of you guys are melancholics and you're not. The funny thing me. is we say, this isn't ideal conditions for me individually. And at the same time, the Lord's like, no, these are the conditions I've given you for your sanctification. And they are ideal for your sanctification. Yes. And that's, that's often how this works. We're going to move on here, folks. Uh, Marty, I see you got a hands raised and you all have an opportunity to kind of jump in here, but for sake of time, want to keep pressing forward. Awesome conversation from all you positives. I'm wondering as I'm listening to you, I'm wondering if if positivity has has a uh, a quick switch between hope and despair. Like I am hopeful until all of a sudden I don't see that this is going the way I want to go, and then it's this boom despair. So I wonder if they just flip flop between those hope and despair. I wonder. I'm asking a question. I'm not asking for anybody to answer it right now. Just throw it out into the universe. Okay, let's move forward here. Pivot our conversation, talking more about how we might show up virtuously. And we look, look to scripture. And so pulled this one here out of the Living Your Strengths Catholic edition, all right? But they pulled it out of the Bible, all right? So we have Philippians 4, 8. All right, so we reflect on this. How might scripture be informing positivity on, on what it looks like to show up virtuously? Philippians 4, 8, St. Paul says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. All right, as we reflect on this, how does this hit us in terms of how's the scripture informing positivity uh, to show up virtuously? Marty, you got a hand up. You want to jump in here, man? You ready to go? Or maybe your hand was already. Oh, yeah. Asked. No, absolutely. And I love the scripture passage, right? If you're familiar with the Metanoia Journal, which I highly recommend uh, participating in, it will transform your life. We'll plug there for our journal, uh, even Thanks, for buddy. guys. And I'm telling you, for men, real men journal. Let me just say that. Um, Canned it over. Um, but this, this passage, right, when we're doing exercise one, right, uh, listing those previous successes, right? It's so easy. And I love this. Uh, the, this uh, mantra, right, is oftentimes we can uh, focus on the ugliness of a few trees and miss the beauty of the entire forest, right? And I, so I think, you know, this passage and, you know, people who are naturally positive can help us to remember 
that even there, there are some ugly trees in the world, right? When you look at the big picture, right? And, 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 and understanding, you know, God's creation, right? And his plan of salvation. It's like, let's focus on that. Let's focus on what's good. And, you, you know, the last, you know, slide in this slide, I think, too, you know, reminds me of St. Pope John Paul II in his first line when he was uh, uh, elected Pope, be not afraid, echoing the scriptures that says it 365 times, you know, do not be afraid, right? And, and you know, why that's so powerful, Matt, is because he was still, right, uh, you know, just coming out of the, the midst of uh, uh, communism in Poland and, and the Soviet Union, right? And before that, it was, it was uh, you know, Nazi Germany and went right into, you know, communism, right, in, mm -hmm. in Poland. So, you know, a lot of people were probably cynical and thinking it was the end of the world and here he comes, you know, and his first line is, you know, be not afraid, you know, open the, open the windows, right? Mm -hmm. Be not afraid mm -hmm. of what's going on inside the church and what's going on in out, outside the church. And, and I think it's, it's, it's a good message for today. And thank God there are enough positive people who are willing to help us to remember that, yeah, there's some bad things going on in our world today, but God is still present. Good is still I present. I love that word. Yeah. I love that word that you, you used a couple of times, remember, right? I remember. And mm -hmm. And it's it's something that again the positive person can do right. Uh, remember the covenant. Remember all the things that he has said. Remember that Christ rose from the dead. Like there is when we and and even think on those things. This is this is that meditative prayer. And folks, when we think on these things, it changes us. It changes us physio physiologically. It changes you when you think on these things in the same way that thinking the doo-doo thoughts can lead you down to a physiological state of depression. These thoughts that are positive, they have ways of, they change the way that our actual genes, our DNA strands express themselves, the proteins that they produce. This is theology of the body. This is the word, the indivisible word, the thoughts in our, in our mind being made flesh in and through our bodies. And it has a way of transforming the thresh, flesh by the renewal of the mind. It's utterly amazing. Teresa, what do you got? Another Bible verse from Thessalonians, which is my favorite, in all things give thanks, for this is the will of the Lord in Christ Jesus concerning you. And I remember having a conversation with a Protestant friend and um, saying how it, you know, in all things give thanks. And oh no, she thought it was just the good things. And it was no, because even though God might not have been the one having a situation happen to us or whatever, he allowed it. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, he knows if we trust him and if we thank him and praise him for it, good can and will come out of it. And boy, if, you know, and I found myself, if I'm starting to get really overwhelmed and depressed about something, if I can start consciously thanking and praising God for that situation, and I'll say to him, I don't understand it, but I trust you. And just, I mean, I will repeat that over and over and over and over again. Yeah. It, the formula that you just stumbled upon there, Teresa, is what all of the, the, the saints, the, the doctors of the church refer to as acts of the will. Right. You don't necessarily, it's not necessarily that you fully trust, but you're just choosing. I'm choosing with my will to have faith. I'm choosing with my will to think on these things, as St. Paul is inviting us to do as well. I was reading uh, 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 recently from uh, a, a book where uh, uh, allegedly St. Thomas Aquinas' sister asks him, What is required to grow in holiness? And he said two words Will it? Will it? doesn't mean that you're bootstrapping it and you're doing it without God, but it's choosing it. It's making those acts of the will. And folks, whether regardless of your temperament, you are free. Let me be the one to tell you, you are free to choose what you focus on. You may feel inclined to focus on things other than what St. Paul's talking about here. You may feel inclined to focus on the opposite. Choose with your will to focus on something else, be obedient to this passage. It will change you. It will change you. And you may think that this is going to make you a Pollyanna or somebody that's naive. All right. Maybe, right. If you want to go to the extreme, but maybe it'll just <laughs> make your life better too. Talia, what do you got? This just makes me think of a story. Um, 
this coach Rasser was in the hospital maybe like a year or something ago. And my first thing to text him as he's laying in the hospital bed was don't forget to offer up your suffering smiley face. And it's like a big joke now. Like he'll just sometimes turn to me and be like, don't forget to offer up your suffering. And like when he received it, he was just like, thanks Talia. Like, I'm... <laughs> and so I was just thinking about like this passage of like, yeah, in my mind, that's like ex that word, like excellence. It's worthy to do that. Um, but that was just a little story that was like, that was like my first thought was like, don't forget to offer up your suffering with like a smiley face. And he was just like, thank you so much. Love it. Love it. Hey, there's opportunity here. It sucks, but there's opportunity here. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy it. And in case you forgot, I'm high positive, number one, and I'm here to remind you. All right. Awesome. All right. Let's look at this pivot here and, and look, look at how this talent might show up virtuously or viciously. So we always look at this based on how they show up in a relationship, right? Often get, well, Gallup has really constructed these themes based on how somebody operates within a team, right? So it's always how your thoughts, feelings, and actions uh, can habitually produce results, right? Okay. Results in a team specifically. And so we look at a virtuous side, uh, a virtuous expression of your talent will lead you to a place of interdependence, right? Where there's a healthy leaning on one another versus the vicious side, you go independent, dependent, or codependent. Okay, so what, uh, what does virtuous interdependence look like for positivity? And this is my stab, feel free to add. Um, invites people to consider the promise of redem redemption amidst the reality of the fall. Invite somebody to consider the promise of redemption amidst the reality of the fall. All right, that word invites, I think, is always important here. Invitations keep us in that zone of influence versus the zone of manipulation. When we're in the zone of influence, that's kind of a, a phraseology that we use at Metanoia Catholic, but we're doing things that honor the freedom of the other person to have their own thoughts, feelings actions, decisions, values, they get to choose. And they may choose opposite of what you think is important, but that's okay. It's just an invitation, right? Invite people to consider the promise of redemption amidst the reality of the fall. Marty, you got a hand up. Yeah, Matt, thank you for this. Because, you, you know, for those who have heard my my, my story, my testimony uh, in, in uh, conversion and sobriety, you know, this rings true for me and, you, you know, I've experienced a, a lot of hardship and uh, uh, tragedies and, and, you know, tribulation, you know, self-inflicting, you know, but then some things, you know, my dad left when I was three, there was divorce, right, chaos and all that and coming out of that, right, into sobriety and into faith, um, you, you know, what I've learned in, you know, 12-step recovery and in my Catholic faith to walk with people, to share my own experience, strength and hope to give them hope. I mean, the biggest four letter word, right. That was so powerful for me, you know, uh, on that journey of sobriety and faith was hope, right. I was hopeless, uh, be before that. Right. And so, you know, for the last 23 years, I've, I have spent not trying to force or convince people, but to share with those who are struggling with hope, right. Who are struggling with suffering, pain, uh, addiction, um, you, you know, tragedies and hardships, you know, throughout life to just share with them in, in a positive way uh, that they can get through this, that, that their suffering doesn't have to be without purpose, right? Redemptive suffering. It's one of mm -hmm. our family sort of charisms that my melancholic wife doesn't like, but uh, I see as a positive, even though I don't enjoy pain. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the virtuous side for me is uh, just sharing my experience, strength and hope, walking along with other people uh, inspiring hope. Awesome, Marty. And, and Talia had to jump off here, but she says uh, also to add on, um, one thing I wanted to mention is that positivity is not forced or fake, but is actually real and honest. I've also learned that it's okay to allow people the space to vent and be negative, and we don't have to fix things all at the same time. Interesting. Okay. So again, holding that space and allowing somebody to own what's theirs, their thoughts, feelings, actions, beliefs, all that stuff, whether or not they want to stay in, you know, in the pit, right. And they can climb out whenever they want. All right. The vicious side here, 
leading to interdependent or excuse me, leading to independence, I'd say is positivity ignores the plight of others. Okay. So this might come in the form of like, you know, I, I, I know a, a couple where the spouse, one of the spouse is very highly positive. The other one's a little bit more of a melancholic disposition. And they were having just bouts, communications, and all the melancholic spouse wanted was to be seen in that place of pain. That's it. Acknowledge. Acknowledge that it's painful. Just be seen and not have somebody trying to change them. And what we, what, what we invariably do is if we need to move somebody, if somebody has to move or we ignore, it means that it can often be received as you're not lovable in that place of pain. You have to rate, you have to come to a positive place before I can really love you, right? And so there's something that can be forced in that, again, ignoring the plight of others, leading to dependence. That's where we need others to match our emotional energy, right? Or again, or else we leave, right? And like, I, I can understand like the inclination to like, you, there could be boundaries and things that you put in place here, but but uh, needing others to match that emotional energy or else it's kind of like, what's wrong with you guys? Is kind of the way that it can often go. It's like, why can't you see it? Leads to codependence. And that codependence, again, is always a shallow relationship where you make accommodations to, to people on both sides and nobody really grows, right? They just stay stagnant. Uh, so this is, could be a worse positive person takes responsibility for others' emotional happiness and others feel free to surrender it. And so it's just kind of like, I can't feel good unless I'm around this person over here, or I can't feel good unless this person has nice things to say over here. And so it's this complete um, disregard for anybody's emotional responsibility, right? I need to have this other person around in order to feel good. Jane, you got a hand up. Yeah, I definitely can see how that vicious side, um, I was living in the, oops, vicious side for many, many years um, with the, because of the, I unknowingly, now that I look back, I would look to others, my husband or my family members to not match my e emotional energy, but like help raise my emotional energy, right? Like, why can't you, you know, like that saying that I would say is like, who encourages the encourager? Well, I was looking to others to help myself. You know, I was blaming others because of the situation that I was at. And, um, and it really has taken a long time to understand that like, no, I'm, re I'm responsible for my mo emotional well-being. I'm responsible for my thoughts. I'm responsible for the choices that I make. And I think also one of the things we talk about, you know, the virtue of hope, but also the spiritual fruit of joy. Like I, you know, at this moment in my journey, I've gotten to a space where the spiritual fruit of joy is just kind of like my go-to, like I'm joyful. And I've had conversations with somebody like, oh, well, that's just, um, uh, an emotional high. It's like, no, you don't understand. This is a deep, deep joy that, and in the midst of the suffering and the plight of others. And mm. the other thing I want to encourage is that one of the things I love about metanoia is the, when we go to the Academy and when we get coached is not being fearful of entering into the plight of others. And really that's one of those gifts that I think Catholic coaches from Metanoia are, um, have a, have a, a unique tool, a unique skill in allowing their client to literally sit. And I, I'm thinking of, especially at Emily Adams, as she, as she walks along with women who've had infant loss and have had incredible pain, incredible mm -hmm. suffering. And yet there's courage. It, it's courageous to sit with another and not run away. So I think um, for me, having positivity and being able to not ignore the other's plight, willfully giving them that space to experience, you know, yeah, Good mm -hmm. Friday happened. Our lady was suffering. 
you know, we don't have to jump to the resurrection too soon. You know, it's that, it's that, it's that process of the three days, you know, <laughs> like right. and hold, three days. Yeah, holding the tension of, of the two, the good Friday and, and the Easter Sunday at the same time. And I think even that movie, uh, I can't remember who brought it up uh, inside out where at the end of the movie, they have the both, both sadness and joy touch one of the memories together. And you have this infusion of this complex, you know, joy and suffering, uh, shr uh, uh, shrouding this memory. It's a really beautiful thing. Jane, thank you. John, you got a hand up and then we'll, uh, we'll bring it home. Yeah, I was just going to follow on what Jane said. I think it really comes down to um, knowing the positive, you're always going to be positive, but from the vicious side of just what we've just been discussing is really making space to listen for the person from where, the, where their perspective is and where they are um, and not jumping to throw in positivity. Well, you might be feeling this, but just think about these things instead. That's not what somebody who needs to hear. So I've learned through being high positive. My wife is melancholic. So um, we have really, really deep conversations because melancholics have really great conversations, but sometimes they can be very dark. And you just really have to make space and listen and, 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 and um, influence the positivity later. There's a time and place for it. And it, for me, it's been learning when is it effective to use it? When is it just a time to make space and listen to hear from the heart of what someone else is going through? And, um, but you can always be positive, just knowing when to use it when it's not appropriate is yeah. a place I, I, to learn. I, I think that, John, you, you kind of nailed it on the head there where you're just like, okay, the, the situational awareness of, of, of showing up where it's not something that's out of control that you have no, that you're just following an urge, right? Whenever like there's an urgency to something, it often can corrupt our freedom, right? And where there's a lack of freedom, there's a lack of love. And so we, we want to notice where we feel this urge to show up positively um, and just be attentive to that and be like, okay, why? Why is it so important for me, for this person to show up and do a little bit of your own work on that? So, um, and Jenny, I see you're asking some great questions here and forgive me, I just haven't really been ignore. I, I've been somewhat ignoring them, not intentionally, but it's just like, well, kind of intentionally, it's just like keeping the conversation here. But I want to honor this one. She said, how does that relate to empathy? Um, how does positivity relate to empathy? Um, well, both of those relationship skills together, empathy really has this ability to, to share somebody else's emotion and all, often shoulder their emotion, even the, the emotional burdens that a person has. And so they'll be able to sit there in whatever emotion that person is experiencing and be able to hold the space really well. And what positivity is going to do though, that empathy is, is going to come alongside. I can see this, right? And this is, again, this is me piecing it together, not from my own experience, but just kind of understanding of the two themes. I can see how positivity can then say, hey, you know what? I, I'm, I'm with you here and we don't have to stay here. We don't have to stay here. Would you like... Would you like, right? To take, can can we move a little bit further? Again, always with, um, always with some invitation. And so we think about how, what's a mindset or a question? I love to do questions that might jumpstart a virtuous expression of positivity. Have I taken a moment to see someone in their emotional suffering, and am I willing to let them stay there if they are unwilling to move? Again, holding the space, allowing them to kind of be there, and just. And allowing them to be there and have it mean nothing about you, right? To be able to hold that space where it doesn't have to leak over into your container, to use a Michelle Dunn expression, right? It can just be, they can just allow that, allow them to have whatever they have, right? Uh, and then we get into those vicious mindsets uh, where it can incline us towards independence. Remember where we're dismissing the plight of other people? Yeah, but dot, dot, dot. And then it's like, look on the bright side. So the yeah, buts can often come across as um, let's get you out of there. Let's move you. Let's like, you need to move. You're not allowed to be where you're at. Come to where I am. Follow my emotions here. Okay. So that's where it can go a little bit independent. Uh, I can't leave you like this. This could be where it goes dependent, right? I can't leave you like this because then if the answer, then is because then I'm stuck feeling this way or I'm going to feel like I didn't do my job. Okay, well, that's about you, right? And we're getting into that dependent kind of place. Uh, and then finally here, when you feel down, just call me. Na, 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 just call me. Like I, I'm here on that shoulder crying. Now, all of these vicious mindsets, they, they can also be expressed in a pot. Like these same words can be expressed in a virtuous way. It's, it's the intention behind them that makes the distinction, 
And so I'm just throwing out some examples here. So don't think that if you ever just, if you ever told a friend, hey, if you feel like crap, just give me a call that you're con that you're suddenly opening up a, a, a codependent relationship there. Okay. We have to look at the fruits, look at the fruits and by the fruits, you will know them. All right, Marty, bring you in here, man. And then we're going to close out here. Go ahead. Yeah. Thanks, Matt. Yeah. This is awesome. You, you, you know, the, and the mindset is so important and uh, this is familiar uh, to me, you know, when working with uh, other men in recovery and their faith, right. Uh, who struggle with, you know, varieties of addiction. One of the most common one is pornography. And I find that most men, even when they start to surrender it, they struggle, right. Uh, to, you, you know, to gain consistent victory. Right. And so there are a lot of people in their life, you know, family members, friends, employers who want to correct them and even criticize them as if that's going to motivate them. Right. And so maybe I guess it just comes natural for me with my positivity uh, to hold this, not just hold the space, but also to encourage and affirm them. Right. You, you know, and I, and I had this experience, you know, recently with guys that I work with where, where they fall and they call me up and they're like, you know, I acted out again. Right. And so rather than criticize them or correct them, I hold the space, I listen, I, I, show, I, I show that I care, but then it just encourages them like, man, I don't know any other guys who have not struggled with this when they started to surrender. I mean, it's, it's normal, right? I mean, the enemy isn't going to just let go, right? And so just, just words of affirmation, encouragement, like it's okay, right? That you're struggling with this. I mean, yeah, there's that I voice of that hope that, that's in all this. Yeah, that yeah, continual just does voice so of much, hope. Right, and, and even if they're not, we're willing to take corrective measures right now. It's like just that sense of encouragement and affirmation you can tell has changed their, 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 their mindset, right? From hopeless, despair, negative to, okay, like at least somebody cares, right? And that just, boy, brings down that wall. Right, right. And so we can be there and kind of stand in that influencer. I can hear your woo coming up here uh, in your communication, Marty, showing up uh, through your expression. Folks, thank you so much for, for your contributions on this. Had a lot of contributions. And uh, we are at the Metanoia Catholic Academy on this call. So go to catholiccoaching.com, learn a little bit more about joining the Metanoia Catholic Academy and everything that we're doing here to help people live in the virtue of their strengths, but also to be better managers, stewards of their minds here, folks. There's freedom in being able to manage your mind better. So thank you for being with us. We got some more signature themes we're going to continue to explore as we continue on. Uh, but blessings to you all. And uh, thanks for being with us. Be sure to like and subscribe so you get these episodes when they hit. Blessings.